make a difference and text C-A-R CAR to 900 to win a car with Gamsel. Gamsel and Rotary Club of Brusaby brings you a chance to win a brand new SUV Corando. The more you text, the more chances you win. Join Gamsel today for your chance to win a car. Fresh freezers, televisions, smartphones, and lots of cash prizes. Draws will be held live on GRTS TV. Proceeds will be used to help the humanitarian activities of the Rotary Club of Brusaby in the Gambia. Every SMS costs ten dollars. Your SMS could save someone's life. Join us and text C A R Car to nine zero zero today. A brand new SUV Corando awaits you. Rotary making a difference. Gamsel Yaiboro. Hello, pretties, and it's another wonderful Saturday morning here on Kirfato, and this is The Brunch with me, Joy Mwama. And of course, I'm not alone in the studio. I have Mr. Lamin Cham, who's from the Standard newspaper, and my very own co-host, Nima Sata. Um, you're highly welcome. And we have no other person than Mr. Mustafa K. Dabo. You're all highly welcome to The Brunch today. Thank you. Thank you very much. As we usually do, we'll take Mr. Lamin Cham, who will take us through um, the newspaper review. What do you have for us, Mr. Lamin? Yes, good afternoon, Joyce and everybody on the panel and uh, so all of you watching over there. Well, this week, well, the week began, of course, uh, with the social security. And interestingly, it also ended with the social security saga. So it has moved from... Uh, scale one to scale two by the end of the week. Uh, the newspapers missed the latest twist on it from State House because that came on Friday when the newspapers have gone on break. Mm -hmm. But early in the week, uh, the standard broke, um, you know, a scoop, I would say, on the ombudsman's report, investigation report into the social security saga. Mm -hmm. You remember, of course, the presidential commission had uh, investigated and submitted their reports. The ombudsman, uh, you know, of course, the ombudsman is the uh, is an independent uh, office um, created to settle disputes to serve as an alternative, uh, uh, you know, avenue to settle disputes, which are normally not taken to court, etc. So it's independent of every of, of government or, or every other concern and every other interest. Now. The, the report was very interesting because, one, it was not meant for public consumption at the time, mm -hmm. as they stressed later. They said it was meant for the parties to the uh, matter. In this case, the social security management, uh, if you like, Mr. Manjang and the staff. And then, of course, the letter was addressed to the Secretary General. But as we know, all know in these days, of course, it's very difficult to keep confidential, uh, you know, official matters confidential. So it was leaked to the press. And mm -hmm. the standard came out with a detailed story of uh, some of the salient points observed by the, uh, by the ombudsman and the recommendations made in there. And one of them was for Mr. Manjang to pay uh, a sum of over hundred thousand dollars that was meant for Padim's on his supposed trip to Sierra Leone, which the ombudsman observed did not take place. He said the money should be refunded. And then the report also criticized uh, the manner where you know how two people were sent to s pursue a course in Ghana, a co mm -hmm. courses that could be obtained or could that could be um, you know that could you, that you could get here in the Gambia. ACCA. ACCA. <coughs> And then uh, it also took issues with Mr. Manjang over, um, you know, things like uh, having, a, having, a, having a dinner for his family, yeah. etc., at some hotel. According to the ombudsman, uh, that vote is meant for guests, official guests of Social Security and not Mr. Manjang's family. But then, of course, the ombudsman observed also that uh, the allegation that Mr. Uh, Manjang sat on on the board of GNPC or five occupying five seats etc. is not true. The sum of money he was supposed to have used at the hotel on the dinner on his family was also inflated by the uh, the protesting staff. 
and disciplinary action should also be taken against the uh, protesting staff in the manner they conducted themselves during the protest. Um, plus many other things to also that uh, the ombudsman reprimanded the protesting staff for. So that, that was that was a scoop that came out in the standard, and the, the reactions was well, well, it kind of it was it was really uh, burning like like a, like like a bushfire in the hammer. Yeah. Now the ombudsman herself, the ombudsman's office itself came to say, well, they did not um, deny that the reports from from them that's authentic. But they, is, is their cardinal principle is confidentiality. So they are disappointed that uh, the report ended up being public in, the, in public consumption. They didn't want that. They issued the report to the parties concerned. So they are disappointed that it got leaked. So I'm sure they, they know very well that it's one of the parties that leaked it to the press. Yeah. So they were disappointed about that. And they came out to tell the public that, well, one of the reasons the office was created was to to be an alternative. So if they are not confidential, then then they obviously they cannot do their job properly. So it was not them who leaked it to the press. They want that to be very clear. Mm -hmm. But then, of course, since it has already been leaked, a lot of people came with a lot of opinions about that. And then later we saw, of course, the, the whole matter was uh, taken into another scale when the president's office said Mr. Manjang should go back to work according to the recommendations of the Commission. presidential commission. So this was one matter that came in the media, the ombudsman report. What do you think about it? Okay, so this is interesting. Uh, I'm of the impression that uh, when the ombudsman intervene in a dispute and they make recommendations, mm -hmm. they are binding. Of course. Right? So I'm not sure if reinstating Manjam was one of their recommendations, and I'm of the opinion that the president's actions may have contradicted the ombudsman's recommendations. Is that the case? No, I mean, the ombudsman didn't categorically stay where uh, Mr. Manjam should go back to his. Office. He said he should refund mm. monies, uh, and he didn't say he should not go back. Yeah. What the ombudsman was trying to say, th things they observe are wrong on both sides, yeah. is what they indicated. And but what, what, what was their verdict? Well, they didn't pass there the verdict. There was no verdict. No, okay. they didn't pass the verdict. That was not their job. Their, <laughs> their job was to observe mm -hmm. what they find wrong on this side or the other side. So for the president or the secretary general to decide mm -hmm. now, uh, what should be done. Okay. So they didn't categorically say that Manjan should go back to or also should, should, should be sacked. Okay. Uh, he just said that Manjan should refund the money. The oh. money he took was not ah, So th that's, what, that that's well understood. understood. Uh, so, so, so yes, um, what do you make of the fact that he should refund the money? You think so? Because there are other issues like um, yeah. when it was published we had reactions uh, mm -hmm. from people who said actually the Ombudsman report fails to input the circumstances the money was used. Mm -hmm. That the man was in Dhaka, mm -hmm. planning to go to Sierra Leone, but he couldn't get the plane to go there. And all that while he was staying in a hotel. Mm -hmm. And the rule of the um, Padium thing, the regulation says, once you leave your country, yeah, you are entitled to Padium. Whether or not you got stranded in Dakar and mm -hmm. stuff like that, you couldn't get a plane, but the Padium is still yours. Yeah, but the that, is that's what, that's what, the person who reacted to the ombudsman's report said it, and he pleaded with Barrow to ignore the ombudsman's report. He said, you know, the presidential commission report was fine and good. Yeah, but the problem is, mm. the problem with Manjan's traveling was that it was not even approved. Good. That is the problem with the traveling. It's it, not it, just it, that the, the payment... The, the, the part, the Sierra Leone lake of the travel was not approved. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. So, and so. then Manjan left his work post for 10 days. Mm -hmm. So then, even if the Padium were to be refunded. That's not just where it should stop. He should also be punished mm -hmm. for not being at his work post for the extra three, uh, yeah. seven days. Well, this particular issue is the money that the Muslim raised. So then the... So, so you made that's a good point. Um, when the person who was reacting to the Ombudsman report said that according to the guidelines, Padium is once you leave your country, you are entitled to Padium. Whether or not you are able to connect a flight or you haven't gone anywhere and come back, the days you stayed there. But, hey, but you are not is. telling me, mm. uh, which is interesting, that the Liberia, because it was already in Dakar for something, but the Liberia part of the trip was not even approved. 
the Sierra Leone and the part of the travel yes. was not, not approved. So, so there should there should not be even a podium on that issue. So and then if you are not approved, you are in the car. People yeah. are looking at it from one dimension, which is the podium thing. Mm. But you this this has to cost attached. Yeah, which we now there is podium, but also there is absent from work without permission. Permission. Yeah. That's also in violation of the service rules. Now I mean, here so is the thing. I think this money, traveling, all of these things are besides the point. Mm. The point here is the, uh, the president's intervention. Mm. Was it the right thing to do? Was it the wrong thing to do? Now that, here's, here's that, the way That I is the last leg. We will come to that perhaps. That's, that's more detail in the social media thing. Mm. Because the newspapers missed that. But let's Yeah, talk but my, about my problem with concentrating on the money part, the traveling part, I feel like all of these small things get attention away from the bigger picture. Which is the big, bigger picture being that right. there are always underlying issues in institutions like this when grievances uh, surfaces. Why? Because there are certain things that are hard to explain to outsiders that only the insiders would know about. Mm -hmm. So the way that you would explain to somebody to convince them about your situation from within, mm -hmm. it's not always available because not all of us are public relations officers or, or stuff like that. So when I speak about this particular case, I speak about it from my own experience from the institution that I come from. Uh, when you are into something like this, the public reacts to what has been manifested in the public. So uh, always what happens is you are grieved by all these small things that happen from within mm -hmm. that is hard to explain to outsiders and people are not seeing it from that perspective. And when people react then you are like, nobody gets me. Right. You get my point. So my issue has always been that you cannot have over 100 staff being uh, in opposition to only one individual only because they want benefits. And that it doesn't cut the cake, it, for me at least. So my, and, and the way I look at it is that there are bigger issues that we are not really focusing on. And for Manjan to be reinstated is reinforcing those uh, issues. Go what, you. what, yeah, go ahead. Um, I wanted to ask, either of you could answer, but don't you think if Manjang has been given a second opportunity to prove himself, that he's going to be doing better than what he used to do before in that I think it's, it's going to be hard, because you as a manager, you're only there to direct how, uh, other people to work, right? So if majority of those people refuse to work for you, then it becomes a problem. But the Ombudsman report did, did commend him for a, lot of for a lot of reforms he carried But out he, did, he, he did that. He of course, did. they mentioned, of course, some things that contradict mm -hmm. that very position of his, like yeah. these small expenditures. I, I, that's I, no, but, I but, but also, that. I mean, I, I read the Ombudsman's report, I, 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 uh, the whole document. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the report, it's not much different from the staff petition. No, that's what somebody said. Um, so. I don't call it an investigation. An investigation is supposed to is supposed to confirm wrongdoing. Mm -hmm. An investigation is supposed to be in them to such an extent that it gets to the bottom of something. But it didn't confirm. Say, it did say, yeah, but it did the, say Mr. the very Biden things they refund the reform institution. But the money. I mean, the that's, very that's things. Some, that no, is some. But it did not break any new ground. But the, the president acted not on the basis of the ombudsman's finding, but on the basis of the commission's finding. Yes. We, we will come to that in the So, and the, so the yeah. commission did not necessarily implicate Manja. In yeah, but even the ombudsman the did not. Even yeah. the ombudsman didn't do that. Didn't, yeah. the, what the ombudsman did was, like Cham said, he highlighted some issues that they said yeah. Manja did that he shouldn't have done which is the area of the uh, overseas study and the money, the party. Mm -hmm. But if you look at it also, I mean, there are a lot of positive things. And also, yeah. I mean, uh, if you look at the staff protest from the be very beginning, mm. you know, to now, you see a lot of issues, both with Manjang's uh, records as various documents that came out of the so uh, social security short, but you also see a lot of lack of discipline. Mm -hmm. You s also see Manjang being vindicated even in the behavior of the staff. staff. Right. I mean, you've seen the so many leaked documents yeah. that came out, but also you see the way they conduct themselves, even in the demonstrations, locking up down the office, the going man. out, the ombudsman, and the even the language office. they speak. Yeah. I mean, they are like some bad boys in Senegambia. I mean, even, the, even the ombudsman's, an ombudsman's uh, report indicated that they should this relationship should be taken against them in the way they comport themselves during the but strike. So what is the point now? If they are happening because they were desperate, because the way I see it, it seems like 
public opinion has swayed more towards uh, Manjang, yeah, yeah. in favor of Manjang than it did to these people. I doubt so it. So they were yeah. like fighting from all fronts. I think that's, that's the no, way but I you see don't, you it. Don't, but you don't go about violating rules and law because you are desperate. Now, because you are desperate. That's not an excuse. But how long should we sit down and allow workers or staff to say, this, new, this general manager will not work here? How, how, how do, do you, you do that? How, do you, how can you I think the, really the work question, like that? When every, every department will have some people who say, no, Mr. And Mr. also, clearly, clearly, mm -hmm. if you look at the documents that the staff said, which I have, I have access to it, I went yeah. to the staff, I spoke to the staff, I have friends among them. But if you look at the documents, mm -hmm. the time they say those documents, mm -hmm. and the time they actually happened, mm -hmm. and you look at the, when, Manjang started talking about yeah. implementing yeah. the proposals of the audit report. Mm -hmm. Then you realize that they are they've actually started the protest yeah. after Long the audit we, report thing yeah, came yeah. out. So it was so it was so like, it was a reaction. It, it, it was really they had long been planning. Mm -hmm. um, and they found an objection that Manjang's coming is definitely that's what they don't want. Yes. This so problem. it's it's yeah. I mean, partially they just don't also agree with what Manja was. So is now the question is, would you think that? Um, do you think that uh, given the employees the opportunity to choose who the manager of SSFH would be the best? I, I don't for think. The, I don't think it's a for, matter for of giving them that choice. No, nobody I has think, that choice. No, yes, yes. I don't think it's a matter of giving them that choice. I think what they want is to say that this is a man we cannot no longer work with, we want him to be changed. Now, here's what I, what I would expect. I know why, or I have a, an idea of why the president did what he did, mm -hmm. because this has been a recurrence since uh, after the impasse, mm -hmm. uh, we went on strike, other people has gone on strike, mm -hmm. and somebody outside there will be like, this needs to stop. Obviously, uh, we expected a different trend to emerge. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, so I think the, the president's, uh, what he did is to deter situations like this from happening in the future. But of course, it's not without implications, right? So what I would expect is, for example, if no one can say Manjang is innocent, is 100% innocent in this case. He's not even I don't innocent. think he is. So I think the best thing would have been to move him somewhere else if the reports find, uh, vindicates him. He could be moved somewhere else, and the people who need to be punished get punished for their actions, mm. and somebody new is being I agree with that. But the very fact that you think, I agree with that. But for me, the staff, including Momulu Kamara, should be punished. I mean, no. to, 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 to even entertain something opposite no, so, so is now, very dangerous. So, so, should we now uh, and conclude this for the time, then we'll come back to it. Should we now say, in the balance of probabilities, um, the, 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 up, the position of Manjang going to back to work mm -hmm. perhaps is, is, is much, has much more merit than Manjang going to somewhere. Does it? If you look at all the circumstances, what would benefit the social security now? Mandan to go back and carry out his reforms or be changed? Somebody else come. What is the what is with the interest of the social security? I think what is in the interest, punish the staff. And let Mandan continue. No, move Mandan and then bring in some other new. person to implement well, the same report it's, that Mandan has. Just, it's, not just, yeah. it's, not, it's not just, just a simple measure to specify both sides. It doesn't solve the problem, it is. Look, it I, I it can does, settle like, in for my job. It does, it's, it's more a pragmatic solution. Yeah. That's more a pragmatic solution because this doesn't okay. solve the problem. So you, you mean the antagonisms and everything will continue? It will continue. As long as Manjang is there. Yes. Yeah, but a lot of people who are involved in that antagonism will have to go. How, this so, how many can be fired? How so many then, people? As much as there so, should be. So there, I mean, there, I, so there you come, you, you look, come back. Look, the point is, Chang, here is the point. These people who are working as social security don't own that institution. Exactly. Now, the staff, insti the, the staff institution, mm -hmm. that institution, the staff alone, they owe that institution a loan of $134 million. And, and, and that about, is preposterous about, by any about, level. That is I mean, more so, than over 1,000 but, but pensioners. But that has been a part no, of the No, it's money not. Money no. <laughs> social it's security a is the most abused public institution I mean, in this country. And these are the staff who are there, and you responsible and for And you that. still don't think money and, is the right person to correct. And you think those same people who are responsible for that, that incredible financial misappropriation are have any sort of management. authority to come and tell anybody how to manage an institution effectively and efficiently. Good. So now, 
I mean, in my opinion, that's not also the case. So I agree with policy Manjang. But to also say not those stuff, removing Manjang, removing him somewhere. Him. No, I think Manjang also committed some offenses. I mean, he, you should not have traveled without the without the approval of the president. But now, is does this is this whatever crime huge enough in the circumstances? For him to be for fired. Him to, for him to be moved. From Not there. fired, but moved. No, it's, it's huge. It's wow, huge. There, you go. there okay. are so many other reports that are lying on the decks of the president, but this is the only one he chooses to act on. What, okay. ha what happens to the Farabakis, for example? Well, that is, that is one thing. We are dealing with the social security point, Now, in the same week, at, at the beginning, um, politics surface again, and the APRC had a press conference, and uh, the interim leader had still had the courage or the boldness, as some people call, that they still believe that the 2016 election was rigged. Apparently, this received a swift repeater from the IC mm -hmm. um, chairman, who said, let them come and bring proof. <coughs> uh, he, the IEC, has proof that Jambi lost, and even Jambi confirmed this himself. So, let the IEC, or let the APRC come with proof. Why are we back to this? I mean, it's been two years since everybody in the world said Jambi lost the elections. What is this, um, what's the APRC trying to do here? I think for the APRC, they're trying to find closure. Like Jamel left unceremoniously and so many things were unresolved, at least from their perspective. So they still hang on to those things that legitimizes the APRC's presence in this country. That is, we were cheated and we still have a chance. So it's also a rallying point. Like you cry around something that everybody will see and recognize and identify themselves with. So it's, it's, it's a both a rallying point and also um, a way to find closure, I think. Somebody support us what they would believe. Let's move on. <laughs> ah, I mean, for me personally, so, I mean, when so I show it, I there's just no, get rid of the patience. <laughs> but, but in the chairman, the chairman really put up a but some challenge. It's, it's said, a good strategy because I otherwise... Have, he said, I have my statistics right from the polling stations <laughs> and I have... In the marble boxes, the, mm -hmm. the boats are there. Yes. I have evidence. Mm -hmm. Let the IEC come with evidence. Yeah, but if Tombo yeah. himself believed otherwise, he would have gone to court. No, I think it's, it's <laughs> a good, the Supreme it's Court. A good but but they didn't go to court, there was no judges. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but if you, if you look at it, even if there were judges at that time, I mean, even Jamba's lawyer ran away down to Senegal and said, well, this is a lost case, I can't win it. <laughs> yeah. So, so they were just trying to, like you yeah. said, they just find some relevance. Yeah, yeah. I, think I think because so. in, in, uh, initially it used to be Jame that caused people to APRC. Mm -hmm. Now Jame is no longer there. Obviously all the victims find themselves in one corner and say, oh, we are victims, we are victims. And that's how they come together as a group, I think. And then the PPP is back in the news. The former mayor aspirant, mm -hmm. Papa Njai, said he's now going to a, a PPP and he doesn't even rule out mm -hmm. he could be he could be party leader. And you know the PPP two weeks ago, uh, coming together to co come on a common platform to go into their Congress in December. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, what the whole world knows is OJ. Now we later know that people like Yaya Sise, who are more senior people there, we are not quite happy with you know, OJ being, but well, they believe that he unilaterally made himself party leader. It was not the recommendation from Sadao de Jawara. True. But now Papa Njai, is he <laughs> Papa Njai, PPP leader? Where is he coming from? I, I think it's a good thing. I mean, if Papa think, mm -hmm. um, one thing he can bring to the party is resources. That's you know, Papa has access to resources. Uh, I don't see him as a very good politician. He's not eloquent, obviously. But he's, <coughs> you know, he has resources. But I mean, you've yeah, seen I what he has brought when he, when he came mayoral elections and he but he didn't, he didn't even come second is it he, yeah, but he was able to APRC came second but he was able to pull up to 90,000 votes in KMC so he has a reasonable uh, 19,000 90,000 no 9,000 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, so and then but APRC pulled 19,000 yeah, so but, but if you look at it I mean you look at the resources that Papa has access to I mean oh, I'm, to, I'm talking in terms of his own person, the personality as a vote seeker, you think it would make any difference? Uh, no, I mean, it would not I, be I very don't think so. I mean, I always had confidence in you, uh, PPP. Do you even think that the PPP will consider making him a leader? When, uh, when, you, have, may, when you have this may. entrenched, when you have people who are far more, in, names that are far more entrenched in the politics of the country. Yeah, but they don't have any other person who can pull as much as Papa. Listen, 
The BBI has yeah. always been the, the backwaters yeah. of Gambian yeah. politics. Yeah. Even, yeah. 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 Even BB Dabo. Bakar Dabo. Bakar Dabo can save the PPP from the, I mean, from being in the backwaters of our politics. So, I mean, so I mean, these are people who belong to the past. I mean, of course, so I you know the Kiankas don't PPP, like yeah, that. So idea. You PPP, PPP is too yeah. long for the for the younger generation to remember and associate with. No, too long a time has passed. Not necessarily. The younger generation had one regime under President Jame that yeah. the only thing they know. So and they so, have so the, the, only they have the historical they, they have the historical account of PPP and they have an opportunity to compare both. Mm -hmm. So if, for example, if there is going to be any sense of uh, I don't know, sympathy towards any of these two parties from the younger generation's perspective, it might be more inclined towards PPP. Um, so I think PPP... What about the UDP? Because, uh, I mean, the PPP comes from the UDP, I couldn't... Well, but I couldn't the UDP do and the PPP, yeah, are they so different? Don't, don't just say the PPP, the, U, the PPP, it's also NCP. Yes, right. But UDP, UDP, of, UDP is dealing with, came from NCP. UDP is but dealing with was leadership yeah, crisis. Yeah. And this is, this is why that. I believe PPP has a chance to come back into the political scene, if, if they can find a charismatic younger person who would appeal to the younger generation. And you think that's Papanjai? I don't think that's Papanjai. Who, the, who then will be? Because they have only old So guards. far, OJ I don't is, see that person. OJ with, is old I, and is the youngest among the guards we're talking about. So, so, so far, I, I can't find that person. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah she's much yeah. older. I think they are yet to find yeah. such a person. So I think they are yet to find someone yeah. who can resonate with. I think they ah. are. I mean, if Bibi were to explain himself to an average Gambian, Say, well, I'm so you've heard of me, I'm back at Bunja Yes, and, uh, he, was guy who he was perhaps, no. he was, he was, the like, old guard doesn't he have was a generally chance. regarded perhaps the most credible at the time. How was it? Even Jammer recognized that, they, even though they fell, up, fell out uh, after, after a couple of weeks together. Yeah, but he worked with them. No, that's just a couple of weeks. Jammer recognized that. Jawara was not so kind to that idea. The fact that BB worked with Jawara. No, but he said that Jawara told him if you if you could. Jawara yeah, but told Jawara everybody. Jawara didn't like it so no, much. No, but he if told you everybody. Kaira, you, there is a person. I know, but he he I told mean, everybody if you could think you could be safe at home and work with this thing, fine. He didn't want to catch anybody. BB. And of course, at the time, Bakari, but BB was so 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 kindly regarded as uh, very credible that he was it was thought that he would be helpful to the regime. Was he? He, no, he, he, he didn't agree with them from the word go, and then... He didn't agree with who? With Jammeh and others. You don't think he had more idea about the no. who that Jawara did? No. Well, Jawara he, seemed to insinuate in his book. Ah, no, so he, enough, he, enough, he, enough he wanted, with he, our he, guy. He, 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 I mean, from the word go, you know, he couldn't copy the junta, because the junta, as we have seen with Koros, he's a case. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I mean, when Bakari knew he could not work with them, he, he went away. Koros came, and he wanted to do the same thing. What happened to him? What was his fate? So this is the problem. So how Bakari knew that these are people that you can work with. Yeah, he has to be smart. <laughs> He's from Kia, obviously. So. <laughs> so, I'm sorry, well, uh, the yeah. Koro case was very serious. It's not a yeah. laughing matter. Yeah, it was. Yeah, was. yeah. So but then yeah. that's how it happened. Sure. Yeah, so PPP. Uh-huh. Mm, I don't see uh, they, ha they are yet to find their guy. They are yet to find their I guy. I think they need to look more hard. But obviously, Papa's, Papa joining them is a plus for them. Obviously, it's a plus, he's bringing he can be in the executive and bringing in some, some, some people and some he resources. He but by, yeah. by also, I mean, if you look at Papa's nature also, he either leads or quit. Ah, uh, that's the type of him. Ah, uh, well, I mean, we've seen that with the UDP. With the UDP. He wanted to become UDP, uh, mayor, mayor candidate, came, yeah, and he see. didn't, when he showed the signal, that's not favorable. So if that quit. is anything to go by, he may quit if he does not lead. Because he's not even arrived in the UDP, because the Congress is in December. Mm -hmm. No, but when he suspected that this thing, Talib is more influential in UDP than me, his mother is like, yeah. 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 So he saw the signals and quit. Yeah. So the signal and he quit. You, you can't blame him for that if you have a... Yes, of course, I'm not blaming yeah. him, but I'm saying given the track record, mm -hmm. if PPP doesn't select him, he may... Also do the same. Yeah. So, okay, there you have it. Okay, these are some of the major... Um, you know, uh, the major stories that came in the newspaper. I'm sure one of them will be returned by the social media because yeah. towards the end of the week we saw uh, another twist in the social security case. Uh, yeah. We will look at the merits and demerits of, uh, of that. Manjam being told to go back and what will happen to the protesting staff. Joyce. Thank you very much, Mr. Lamin Cham. Now we'll move it over to Nyamasada. But what have been trending? Okay, so what have been trending on social media from the past weeks uh, to now? Uh, it's not very interesting as we would have expected. Uh, we have the social security issue, we have the FAR issue. If mm -hmm. you know what FAR is, is the oil company that is trying to see if Gambia actually has oil that is viable enough for extraction. Right. 
Um, so we talked a little bit about social security from his uh, viewpoint. Mm -hmm. uh, the Ombudsman report came out. Uh, it was leaked um, mm -hmm. ceremoniously. Uh, but also the Presidential Commission also have sent their report to the President and Shifley, he has uh, really reacted to it. So it's his reaction to that report that has been generating so much uh, uh, debate on social media, some in favor, others uh, are not really impressed with what had happened. Um, so according to the President's reaction to that report, Manjang is being reinstated or should be reinstated as MD of the Social Security, and Momodu Kamara, who was the leader of the striking group of the staff association, mm -hmm. uh, is he's to be the fired. Staff, he's the board rep, he the also, staff board rep. The staff board rep. Is, uh, he is to be fired, and some of the members from that group also, uh, the president recommended to the board to take action, uh, appropriate action, and we expect that to be in the negative. Mm -hmm. uh, whether they are to be fired or what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, so I think a uh, majority of those who are reacting on the social media are looking at the implications of this, what is going to happen. Uh, we may have glimpses of what the reaction of those striking in the past are. Uh, some are not using a very good language. Uh, I think uh, this morning we were talking about some of them saying this country is going to be on fire, wow. uh, which is very outrageous. We mm -hmm. don't want this country to be on fire. Uh, but also, um, from my perspective, I think the president's reaction is also going to be as a way of deter, uh, deterrent, uh, to deter mm -hmm. actions like that to happen in the future. But it may also have a negative implication on industrial action, right. and which is also always in, in a democratic society a very effective means to uh, regulate uh, systems that are not really favorable to the employees. Right. Um, so that's my perspective. I don't know what yours are going to be. Well, the social security man. Now, uh, let's come to the, the, the president's intervention. Now, mm -hmm. um, you know, the president has sort of a commission of inquiry, mm -hmm. tasked them to do uh, this job. In one month, I think they they, they it's covered almost that. Almost about that. Yeah. Yes. Now, he mm -hmm. now has taking action and said Manjan should go back to work. I think, I think my question would be, why this case particularly? If there are other things that have preceded this and people are expecting him to react to those reports and he didn't, why this one? Well, I think, in fact, when it comes to the Farabar case, um, the, the chairman had, had been on his Facebook mm -hmm. trying to explain what and what could happen mm -hmm. in, that, in, that, in that type of situation he did. And that was one, the president has the, you know, the duty or the right to publish or not publish it within the six months or so after its completion. Mm -hmm. And I think it's only after the six <coughs> months that the president didn't publish it mm -hmm. that the chairman can be asked or cornered or pressurized in some way mm -hmm. to Sorry, reveal what has been. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, we are, we are still within that six, six, six months. Yeah. Yeah. So, he actually As said that even in an interview with us, he's still uh -huh. Yeah, but my, my question so is, now, why hasn't the, the president... As far as the law is concerned, yeah. you can't argue with the president. You can, of course, pressurize the president. Why, why is he taking you? Perhaps this matter is more complex. The parabai, because lives were lost. You cannot compare yes. that to... Social yeah, security. Social security. This is easier to... Yeah, exactly. To this one is much that. easier to handle. Okay. Lives were lost. Mm -hmm. People are standing trial for murder. Yeah. Stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It's a much more... Complex matter need requiring rigorous, uh, you know, procedures to follow. So that's why yeah. President perhaps is taking too long, and you cannot force him to do it since the law said mm -hmm. he can hold on to it for six months or so. Yeah. Right. So perhaps this is why we haven't had anything from. The and I think in this okay. country, what the social security for me the most learning, the most important thing people need to learn in this social security thing is that people need to understand that there is a leader in this country. No, sometimes the way people also behave, it's very disrespectful. And also, people need to, I will come to explain that, people need to have some sense of discipline. Like, decisions cannot be taken by everyone. Hmm. Suppose there is a decision to be taken in this room. And I say, I want to take, you want to take, he wants, she wants to take, she wants to take. You think we'll get any? There will be chaos. There will be chaos. Yeah. So this is the thing, this is the idea. Now, when social security is when the decision before the president, when the panel president constituted submitted its report to the president, and the president says, this is what we are going to do. You disagree with that decision. Mm -hmm. As 
a member of staff association, a senior member of a staff association, and you go on to an interview, give an interview to a journalist and say, you know, if need be, the country will burn. But this Absolutely. won't happen. That's irresponsible. That is irresponsible. Absolutely. You cannot do that. Yeah. I mean, if I personally were the president, maybe Barrow is this, you know, kind maybe. of a guy. Mm. I mean, I, would, I wouldn't regard... I, if I were to even have a discussion now, I wouldn't have that with that individual. Yeah, you know, because the, because uh, there has to be. You know, that, that, we have to also be responsible one, in the way we express ourselves. That's very is, important. That is the problem. Look at look at even how it started. Yeah. You have a grievance. There are laws in this country that explains how you take care of grievances. Mm -hmm. But because you are with that kind of complex, thinking you are the like the big guy. Oh, you are the guy who can say it happens and it happens. You yes. go and do things the way you, you think know, they should be done. You know, it, it, this it, country also it has comes, laws. Yes, it comes down to, you know, how leaders find themselves in and mm -hmm. how they make, uh, how they cut out their own image and their own uh, assertiveness in, in matters that, that comes before them. Yeah. And how they cut the balance between being seen as a dictator autocratic or being seen to be too weak. Mm -hmm. Now you have to get this balance right. Yeah. Many occasions in the past we have, people have criticized but have been too weak. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure, he, I, I cannot go into his mind, but I'm so going into his mind, he's also thinking of, you know, avoiding taking drastic actions that will, that will, that will make him to be seen to be autocratic or dictatorial. Mm -hmm. And he finds it difficult to balance these things. But then of course, as you said, we as the subjects, we should have to recognize that somebody is here who's been elected to decide for us. We can disagree with his decision, but we have to respect that. That is what I am saying. So that's so what I'm, we are coming. I'm, I'm going, going to point. agree with you on one point and disagree but with But what, is, what is unacceptable is where there is nothing coming from the presidency until things are. Yeah, but when out. the president said the this is what we think we should do, we, mm -hmm. we, we may there disagree. are ways to disagree with we that. Can disagree. If you disagree with it, yes. there are courts to resort. Yeah, exactly. And not total you don't just go, or, yeah, or, 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 you don't do that. Yeah. yeah. That's so another thing we have. That's not but democracy. Then of course, this, the whole problem is this, uh, this uh, flimsy idea that um, we are now in a democracy. So no, but that is not democracy. That's, that's not, lawlessness. That is the problem the leadership have now. No, mm -hmm. How do you cut the balance with, you know, between being seen to be autocratic and being seen to be too weak? Mm -hmm. So you have to have, people must have to understand that democracy doesn't mean there is lawlessness. No, no. no. All right, so you can disagree with the leader's decision, mm -hmm. but then you don't have you to have disrespect. To be disrespect you have to be measured in your response. Especially yeah. if, if you are a leader. Absolutely. Yeah. So That's I am right. always against moral policy. I don't like when people say people have to be like this, people have to be like that. But I can agree with mutual respect. When you want respect, you have to give respect. And when you, when you elect somebody to be your leader, at least the least they deserve from you is respect. And also, this country belongs to all of us. If it goes the other way, we go with it. It's like we are in a boat, and he is the one who is leading mm -hmm. uh, that boat. So if it sinks, we all sink with it. I hope we're going to uh, learn something well, Because from people this. Will always, you can always, I mean, as a citizen, yeah. you always have your day. Obviously. If the, if the president acted in a manner that you don't agree with, mm -hmm. and he insisted and got arrogant, your day will come. And there are and no then there will be the election day, you can say, well, Today you will you will learn and how are, the people there are. There are even laws in place that tells you yeah. if you what are in this situation, do, yes. this is what you do. Yeah. Now, if you have grievances against this against an institution, you take them to X, Y, and Z institutions. Yeah, exactly. Look at what the ombudsman did. Yes, yes. Now you this was, is this, I was are, this surprised are the institutions in place. Why the ombudsman didn't come up with any verdict? Because that's that's what we expect from that institution. Well, I think like, I, according I'm, to her, they, they identify the flaws and doing as, that as an alternative. Like for example, but even as an alternative, but no, we have example, seen, for example, now, there, there, was in cases there, where was there was a verdict. There was a verdict. There was even so a verdict. Yes, but but now, for example, uh, if if Baro, like look at this, if, where the ombudsman's input can come in. Mm -hmm. If the president now says, okay, Mr. M M M M I mean, Manjang can go back to work, mm -hmm. but he also said Manjang should pay back this yeah. this money. Yeah. Okay. So that's if a see that will help. Yeah. That will help the situation. Yeah. And that's. That's the kind of role the ombudsman is trying to play. Yeah. To tell everybody's wrong, wrong, to highlight everybody's, everybody's mistakes. Everybody's wrongs and then we... And then the, the, person yeah. who should, the person who should make decision mm -hmm. 
uh, should, should help him or herself with those informations mm -hmm. and make a decision that perhaps will be acceptable to both. Sure. So that's what the ombudsman was doing. What the ombudsman's yeah. concern was definitely mm -hmm. the More report got the leaked and he said they didn't want that. But that's true. But then who are they to tell journalists not to? Yeah. But it's not, he didn't really blame, blame the journalist actually. He blamed yeah. the other the party source. because the journalist wouldn't have seen it if somebody... It came from not, somewhere. Yeah, it came from somebody. Yeah. So that, that was unfortunate. So we, we are moving ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, if any one of you have, have been following this show for a very long time, you know that I am the most enthusiastic about... <coughs> Uh, the chances of Gambia extracting oil. Right. And very recently, we know that there is a company called FAR who has started um, their, uh, is it an investigation? It's something you would call Test it. Drill. Test drilling to mm. see if Gambia's oil is in fact viable, uh, viable. And a few days ago, it came out that uh, the first test failed. Uh, nothing has been discovered, nothing of significance. Uh, so that was frustrating and disappointing. And we just yeah. hope that moving ahead, because Mustafa just reminded me that there are other worlds that need to be uh, checked out also. Mm. So we are still hopeful that at least one of those or two of those or the rest of those would be viable enough for us to look How forward. many more prospects? Uh, uh, five, five, five. How many chances? Five, five, five more. Five more. Yeah. But then what has so been the reaction? So that's one down, five to go. But then this one, okay. this one, the, the ones they are considering is different from this one. Yeah, but the, 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 the thing also one, is the thing also is they are still analyzing. They've been giving um, uh, six months extension to mm -hmm. to further analyze the the content. Okay. Um, to further evaluate. So ch and, chances yeah. are they may be wrong from um, the initial stage. We hope they are. Of course. Uh, uh, well, we could say that, but they've been given that six month extension. I mean, this is a release from State House yesterday. Mm -hmm. I mean, at around nine onwards, okay. State House issued a statement to say they've given them an extension of six months extension to evaluate. So, so the news was not good for State House, sorry. They, they wanted uh, to. I don't, I don't uh, think any well, party. Well, I mean, yeah, you know, for all of us, I think we have our fingers crossed yeah. Yeah. for a lot of us. Yeah. Of course, I see some people saying it's good that we don't have oil. Ah, right. Uh, because uh, if we have oil, yeah. given the corrupt nature of quote unquote mm -hmm. of our public office and the secrecy of our governance system, we may have a trouble. Mm -hmm. uh, and because citizens' expectations will shoot up. Mm -hmm. but, but, but we can have government performance is oil. Vote out any government we think is corrupt yeah, and then yeah, continue with our oil with a new yeah. government. I think they are scared out. because of yeah. generally the African experience with exactly, the oil. Exactly. Yeah. You know, our neighbors do. Mm -hmm. They have one. They have, our neighbors have. So yeah. Senegal? Yes. But they haven't, haven't seen them, haven't seen it flowing. Yeah. 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 Well, but they're in the process of, you know. Of drilling. Yeah. So, you know. This so they have thing, confirmed. Yeah. Oil in, is there. Even FAI is operating in Senegal. But, and, 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 and there they are, they are actually literally yeah. far in, yeah. their, in their processing than here. Yeah. So, okay. I mean, if you look at it, so, so uh, personally, I don't know how to, I don't know what to think of oil prospects in the Gambia. I don't know if we should have it or we should I mean, have it. It's, no, it's, what it's I know, a good thing, it's and a bad it. thing. It depends on how you handle it. We have seen I that in countries where I, it happens, I think the source it, of all I their problem is that one, nice for us to have it. they are mm. reinvesting. Yes, because but I believe it. we can develop without oil. No. Well, well, to a level. We can also but I can. Be, I, I want to believe that with oil is wealth. I mean, if we have more wealth to what we have now and it's properly managed, Kevin, there's no regret about it. Yeah, but uh, for look me, at, before the oil it. comes, I think I, I think we need to be very stable. We need to be five years into a very important, organized, civilized governance system. Five years before we have oil. <laughs> well, well, well. So well, that, so that, so that we don't go to war. Yeah. Oh, well, well, well. All right. So um, <laughs> ah, again, I, I just want to bring in another dynamics to this whole equation is the far company itself. Uh, mm. We have also learned on social media that their shares have started dropping as a Absolutely. result of this failure. Absolutely. So is that an encouragement, or do we expect that they are going to continue even after this? Um, they are aware of the risk. In fact, um, fads. Um, when they were presenting the report to their investors, this is some of the things. This is one of the things that the that the uh, the general manager actually said. I'm looking for the exact quotes to to give you. But in essence, what the what the what the manager said was that the was that this is a reminder of the risk mm -hmm. that we encounter in this industry. 
that sometimes you can hope so yeah. much mm -hmm. and yet get so little mm -hmm. or sometimes nothing. So, I mean, imagine, you know, we were talking about, um, um, so it, the, the part of the code is that drilling the first offshore oil for 40 years has drawn attention to this well. And the result is a reminder of the risk mm -hmm. we face in our business. Mm -hmm. 40 this years is or 40 years? 40 years, I mean, given the... Given the, yeah, okay, their history. Yeah. So if you look at it, I mean, they are also aware of this risk, yeah, these challenges in the industry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But think about it. Um, far ex, far petronas and Erin mm -hmm. spends close to $50 million on this. Now, in this short period. And, uh, yes, on this test drill, this was supposed to cost them. Now imagine if Gambia had put its resources into this. Yeah. You know, we were, say, yeah. we were once talking about we're that. Talking about this so it was a good thing that so the government was not going to spend at this stage. The government yes. doesn't share in this. Yeah, at yeah. This so, so because th there is so much risk that you, it's like, for instance, you know, you know, they, there can be a tree, mm -hmm. but there may not be a forest. Mm -hmm. Like it, it's a tree that makes a forest, right? Mm -hmm. But a tree does not mean there is a forest. Yeah. So I even if you, like Gambia has this problem with Kanaji Mineral in 2015, I think, mm -hmm. when Kanaji Mineral granted license to mine HMS, the heavy mineral sacks, yeah. zircon, aluminite, and, and rotile. Mm -hmm. What happened was there was a very small content of, of um, you know, this very precious mineral called uh, uh, uranium. A very little content. Yeah. That was not enough to, for anybody to, you know, start any sort of mining on, on the issue. Mm -hmm. And Nyambe got that information and he, he, he said, well, there is uranium, uranium yes, in course. the Gambia. Yeah. And then he terminated their stuff and said, well, they are mining uranium. Exactly. Yeah. When and they, they took us to court and they won. And yeah. a lot of money. So, you know, in this industry, it's an extractive industry, oil, what, even, what I could, what it's I a found, very risky it's business. Risky. Sometimes, yeah. Yeah. sometimes you expect something mm -hmm. and it's not there. Yeah, but this you is know, also so it's, it's a good thing in the sense that a lot of people who expect uh, the government to have more shares than they already have, mm. there's a justification mm. to say that the shares are okay the way they are because these people are risking more and they are spending more than the government. And there may not be anything there. Yeah. May not be. I think uh, this, this, I've always uh, suspected uh, uh, these prospects for oil because it's not, it's been 10 years or more since I've heard about these prospects for oil. I remember yeah. Jamie coming on television, uh, then, I, then, then he was holding a, mm -hmm. then there, there was no CD, it was a floppy disk, he was saying, you know, the details were in that disk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know about oil. That is twenty. But even the, the, yeah. the fact of the years issues. ago, yeah, but the up fact to is now, mm -hmm. nobody has really laid hands on it, any tangible evidence. Yeah, but even the fact or, is, in fact, uh, Jambe found those those details here. Even I mean, even during the other time, yeah, right. so, yeah. so Gambia's first um, geological survey was done, uh, I think, before independence. Huh? So, 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 and so later. After independence by the Chinese, I forgot the exact date, but if you go to geological department, you see a, a huge map of so, Gambia's so geological just, survey <laughs> where po places with potential resources are pinpointed. So Gambia is very under, uh, how do they call it? T uh, they explored. call it underexploited very much. Yes. Like there are potentials of resources in the country, but they are unexploited. Yeah. You understand, yeah. but so you can say for for fact for a fact that something is there is something there. Yeah, it's so, all so majority it's are based on here. speculation. So we will, so we will, we will spend another year or a decade uh, under this in this kind of scouting for scouting more, more, and more and more. Possibly, and but it's be. better than nothing. At least uh, we are finding out things, whether it's yeah. there or not. So, so let's we risk redundancy. It's just now that we are having more practical moves towards yeah. uh, towards exploring whether there is there is some or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Perhaps this is the very first time we're getting practical moves in, into place to, to find out what is going Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like this okay. is the first. Okay. Yeah. Right, uh, but, but also, of course, in the extractives we have. Yeah. I mean, you know, we are doing this heavy mineral sounds. And That's wow. true. They are also not super All expensive. All right. So let's, but let's be redundant and say we're going to wrap this session of uh, the brunch show today. And I'll
hand over to you to continue yeah. the show. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Nima Sada. That was quite insightful. We spoke about the far issue and we spoke about a lot more. And I believe that what have been trending is quite um, relative to what Mr. Lamicham have said. Now straight to the Kedfatu website, Mr. Kedaba, what do you have for us? Um, thank you very much. There are a lot of things that we had <coughs> covered um, that um, has also been in the newspapers, but there are some aspects that are not, we are not covered uh, by the newspapers that are on Kedfatu website. Right. Um, of course, they buy into some of our. They didn't publish the social security thing, but we did anyway. Ah, well, we, we haven't come to publish. We haven't. We are, we are yet to go to press. Yeah. The, the news broke yesterday, and we are. Yeah, I hope you would have break. fresher angles to it. Absolutely. So, <laughs> you know. So yeah. So um, um, one thing we may like to discuss is that um, Reed Brody was on Kelfato, the. The, the main show, mm -hmm. I mean, on television. Okay. The Tyrant Honda. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, and he talked about the prospects of getting Jambe tried in, Ghana. you know, Ghana, you know, with the, yeah, you know, he was there with Martin mm -hmm. Kerry and, you know, it was an impressive, I mean, I mean, performance. I mean, hearing him talk about um, the, the, large number of evidence that are still available even though some physical evidences may have been destroyed but yeah. the human testimony yes, yes. and also the the, the 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 evidence of destruction of evidence yeah. mm -hmm. which is also a crime on its own yes, yes. destruction of evidence is a crime yeah, I mean, about it. talked about a lot of things and so you know and the prospects of of, of, of getting yambe so um, perhaps before i comment on this i I spring an addition, uh, which, which, which of course also came in the newspapers. Um, organization calling themselves um, African Lawyers, mm. League of Lawyers, something like that, AFLA. Oh, was uh, it the one who yes. came here during Jamaica? Oh, no, 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 no. That's, that's that's one not is, the same uh, one. No, that one, has that one is disgruntled by that organization uh -huh. and he went and formed his own. Exactly. Oh, okay. AFLA, um, they have a very strong presence in the Hague. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and in the next coming weeks, I think it's in January, the ICC 17 session, the members to the treaty will have a meeting in, in The Hague. Okay. And they want to use that uh, um, you know, opportunity mm -hmm. to get member states to sign up mm -hmm. to the campaign to bring Yamamoto okay, to justice right, in Ghana. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think there is one, 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 you know, one, one, one notch up mm -hmm. in the campaign to bring Yamamoto to justice. And, Real Brody absolutely will, will salute that initiative and, and, and you know, he will work towards that. But then the issue now is um, how do you practically make that possible? Because the problem is the, the, the equatorial Guinean leader, the eco, I mean, the eco, eco Guinean the leader. Equatorial. Yeah. Equatorial. Yes, yeah. there, there, there is a word that you can call a, a Guinea equatorial, mm -hmm. a Kito Guinea mm -hmm. yeah, leader. He still, well, I don't know. The last time he spoke, he spoke vehemently against that idea because he thought his intervention to bring Yamia there actually saved, mm -hmm. uh, you know, some situ ugly situations here, mm -hmm. and he should be left there. Mm -hmm. But do you think this Reed Brody approach and the lawyers and the Hague and everything now can be a pressure on him to? to yeah, you know, I, I see this happening. I think what these guys are doing is to. Uh, draw the international attention to that particular case, yeah. and so it gives it a di international dimension. Mm -hmm. And uh, what can happen is there are certain crimes that when they are committed, they have universal jurisdiction. Yes, absolutely. For example, crimes against humanity, which is something <laughs> that you can accuse Jamia of. So Ghana would have a jurisdiction as much as Equatorial Guinea would have or any other country to try Jamia for such crimes. Mm -hmm. uh, and especially Ghana has a, a special interest in this. And we also know that compared to Gambia, Ghana ha would have more international support in putting pressure on the, the, yeah. the Equatorial Guinean leadership to, in fact, send okay. Yambe to Ghana for trial. So it depends on the magnitude of the pressure from outside that has been put on the, the, the Equatorial Guinea's leadership to hand over Yambe. If that happens, then the chances are very likely. Mustafa? I, you think this will, this will like uh, Obasanjo and Charles Taylor? Um, Obasanjo assault child still of, of sanctuary. Yeah, and I mean, later, the situation they are and similar. And later, him over to the yeah. to the lake. The situations are you similar think? in one sense, but they are also different in another sense. You mean, uh, you mean, you yeah. mean Gwema is far more 
it's far it's, more it's, dictatorial it's far more, yes. and more i mean it would be it's easier in uh Obasanjo's case to convince him because of the political dynamics in mm -hmm. that country at the time than you would this particular president because of their leadership styles and also because of the nature of their regime and also just uh Obasanjo had more friendly relations with the rest of the world to want to protect yes. than you would expect from this country. No, but uh, May Guema also has some, has some business interests with a lot, of, a lot of Western leaders, for example. That's right. if, if the pressure comes from those particular dimensions, then the chances of him uh, willing to hand over Jammeh are very likely than otherwise. So what no. does this leave then, uh, Mustafa? With the, um, for me, with the, I think, with the, I think here, here are a few things that uh, Teodo would not would not lose. Um, Teodo is in a very would be in a very funny situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If the international community and the cry to get Jambe to justice mm -hmm. has gone up significantly, high, as we expect it would when Ghana comes into the business, yeah. and when you know all the Gambian activists come together, yeah. and raise the cost on Teodo Obiang, wherever he goes, they go after him. So you ask yourself, what interest, do, I interest have to protect this does Teodo have to protect the Jambe? Yeah. Oh, how much benefits mm -hmm. does Jambe bring to Teodo? No one takes trouble for nothing. And again, so, so you look at it from that perspective, you understand that if Teodo, if there is enough pressure on Teodo, there is a likelihood that, that is going to swallow Jambe out. And again, That's a possibility. And again the, as the campaign heats up, uh, world attention is going to be drawn to his own leadership style. Absolutely. Which, which has already been criticized. And he does not want... For exactly he has already reasons. enough attention. Absolutely, yeah. yes. Yeah. And yes. you know, you know, and also let's look at how old this old man is. He's so becoming, he's getting life. older, even though Equatorial Guinea is a family affair, but... Yeah. Is a Teodo family affair, but so, the guy so is getting older. And we have experience. We have seen that some of these old men, some of these strong men, even those who have passed power from father to son, yeah. mm -hmm. the son have quite often been incapable of handling affairs as father does. Even before they, we've seen this in Fuabe's case. Is it yeah. Fuabe Togo? Yeah, yeah. yeah. foreign foreign Yes, yeah. we've seen it in yeah. his case. Yeah. And we've seen it in. Yeah. I, even in uh, in Cameroon, right? Yeah, in, in the Gabon. Bong, the yeah. Bongos. Yeah. In, in Cap Gabon. Yeah, yeah. So we've seen it in some fairy cookies. I hope maybe our time is finished. But I, I just want to mention two things. Mm -hmm. Because it's also important to mention the fact that the government has, the cabinet has met and they're planning to uh, revisit public expenditure and make some savings of about one billion dollars. But how are they going to do that? Are they going, going back to the transport? Uh, well, yes. So I mean, one they, of the they, things that they, they talked about on is transport. What? So that was one step. No, they haven't. They haven't. They, they haven't. Policy. So what they did was that uh, the, the part of the vehicle policy was implemented, which was giving out the money, uh, uh, bringing in the transport allowance. Yes. That was supposed to be part of the implementation of the vehicle policy. But what was not done is taking the taking vehicles the from the from road, the people. That was from the people. That was, that was, selling that's those not same vehicles, that is what, not what... That's not popular. Happened. because uh, So the government did not have the guts, guts to implement that. To do it. They, uh, they realized it wasn't popular. To put it bluntly. Mm -hmm. Public official didn't want to give, get, go away with their vehicles. Yes. I mean, they, you know, so much luxury and comfort to them. That yeah. they, and I can see Barrow doing it even in next yes. year. I think they are just saying it. No, I think they they realize it's, it's it's not that it's not that easy. It's not do. famous. It's not popular because it's, it's civil servants famous, would, but here is the especially thing. senior it's, civil servants. They, I mean, they see vehicles as the only incentive that's keeping them to their office. Yes. Most people. I mean, you look at their salaries. It's, it's, I mean, they get starvation wages, so it's they see famous. the vehicle as as the only incentive. If you take that from them, mm -hmm. I mean, come on. <laughs> They'll find it difficult. But it turns yeah. out, I mean, it's, this is interesting because my colleague and I, who's going to be on the show later on, we did a, a research on this before. So yeah. before I came here, we had a, a, an idea about maybe doing a, what they call now, uh, I don't know. Okay, I forgot. Yeah, but it was going to be like, a YouTube like channel. Like what they do, the, 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 the advocates that you put all the people, the minister and all the... Uh, civil stuff, and all the only people who work in the ministry in one bus, and they take them and bring them back. Yeah. <laughs> that's what they accuse <laughs> Doyle of, of propagating. <laughs> so the problem with the people. That's what they accuse Doyle of actually. There isn't much, there isn't much said, information from within. 
a lot of uh, the people, the, their idea about what the policy was going to be about and what the actual policy is about, are, they are not the same things. Ah. So we, we had a, an opportunity to interview a few people. So there are still people within the government ranks who had vehicles who still have ideas about the vehicle policy that does not necessarily uh, relate to the actual vehicle policy thing. But also the government has their hands tied. It seems like the gov from the government itself, the willingness is not there. It's not but there. the pressure is coming from the international community who have IMF. interest. Yes. In the economy will grow, but the, the much of our money we generate goes to debt servicing. To pay, to pay, to service. You know, I think about 30 something percent, I think. If so, I'm right. so we have to save so, money. So you have process. to look at it. IMF is concerned that if our debt portfolio goes beyond this. We, we may default. We may yes. see cases like we like see in, in Egypt, in, 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 uh, uh, Greece. Greece. Yeah. Greece. And you know, always when you have this kind of debt to GDP ratio, lenders don't want to give money yes, to right. people risky. who will default. Okay. Yes. So, I mean, you don't have now what they are even planning on doing as of as when finance, the former finance minister was there was to recalculate the country's GDP and say, okay, um, they said, well, our GDP, the calculation has been like, it's not where it should be. Like, for instance, we could have been $2 billion yeah. instead of $1 billion because the GDP, Gambia's GDP, they said $1 billion. So we could say, they could say, okay, our GDP is $2 billion. Recalculate the GDP, say it's $2 billion or let's say $1.5 billion. Now, if that happened, then obviously the debt to GDP ratio yeah. will go down. Absolutely. So then you can, but, but how it's, that's does not that even save us? It's not sustainable. So, but, um, but going back to this safe cutting measures, apart from the vehicle policy, which other ways? Yeah, you? there are other ways, which is they said, well, now there will be no cash payments. Where monies are being paid, there will be going to be bank payments, and also uh, they will utilize the, and the, um, like, usage of things relating to digital economy like uh, yeah, okay. Card. visa cards you know mastercards and things like that so but i mean if you look at it i mean we we lose a lot of revenues mm -hmm. from revenue collection points yeah AMC, and the audit leakage. department also yeah. has so, a so the same old problem leakages and corruption yeah. Yeah. Must I mean, be eradicated. Some time, Thank some you time very work. much, okay. guys. Wow. I'm afraid we have to, I have to cut you short here. But um, of course, we'll have subsequent time to discuss about that. So stay to one of my favorite sessions of the show, which is the entrepreneur. And what we do every edition is we profile a Gambian that is doing very well in the business for economic growth and employment creation. So today we'll meet a young Gambian lady who's making a name for herself in the hairdressing, beauty, and fashion industry. Her name is Sally Sekanjai. Let's watch. My Sally Sekanjai, um, founder of Experience Beauty Parlor. Why need the XBP link again? I was going to back out the board at the bank. So I was going to go after back out the church. Experience Beauty Parlor, they are the same. 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 Yep, da. Lo ham ne jigen daf kore sohla. Pur look good, ten kore daf. Then they will order. Kamu ga guest dara online. Send you ko. Mane ni lako utal. So you ko amu tamne na de utal lo similar to lo lo within two weeks. Okay, business way. Dama janga, dama jangon kawa of Amsterdam fi bakote. Then later, I them attachment uh, in Senegal for three months. So um, it was not easy. A jarna food bari ak fumedi. Then when you are start the lige si bena salon kololi mariam. Then when I am kiliani jigen jang hayo hamne inde wata na yo yo. Then when I muna click ak nubari. So kera sinyo muna mane farmani makogere. 
always dama ko wara ay gërëm muna man lu tax mu ñu loñu andil comme façon bagage yi ñun dañ ko dé bëgga ak suma xariti way duñ ko dé gëss muna man ndax mu nga ko andi man ko waaw way ndax di ngeen ko jënd ak price bu ma ko bëgga jaay muna man loko li fi né rek ñun bëgga nañ bi gëss duñ ko dé gëss lool mo ma motivé man né why not ma ngi liggéeyal net why not ma start suma bas ok di andi préparer bolé ko salon bi because I'm not experienced if I say the leader at makeup. So no ladder must start um at Santa Yala. This month you get um two years on the twenty seventh Santa Yala da Bugari. Ah boom mom a TV league come down high then I know Jenna Ben I on I twenty thirty thousand next minute you know that level ma xam nga ben ak ñaar do mëna wax dire because dañ dess ben na level len do len gisat bobu problème la lepp bi mom mo mané ko dess def way su passé lolu suma customer yi mënuma len wax fay euh ma ngi employ ñaari nit ak man suma bopa préparer ma am yenen halé yu ma jangal ño xamna attachment lay ñew ñu ngi train way ñom tam dey good now suma mora mi dal jaxay kiss dima dey sol kam dima dey jaay if you go way bu gana ko start kiss demand bi mu ngi hayagum maybe dina dugga ci if you pass it way kom ci site salon bi ak defenib suma mora mi la gina am client da magi tam ñu ngi ñew ñu xam ทุกๆเด็กนะฟอร์มักบุกันในเซนเนกาลบุกันในโยดามเซนเนกาลเอ็กซ์พีพีบุกันอาอาเกฟูฟูเอ็กฟอร์นาวด้าเซนเนกา
a new in, on the show, on the brunch show. He goes by the name Demba Kande. Um, today he's wearing the hat of um, one from the Afro Barimita and Ensel Kujabi from the Afro Barimita as well. You're highly welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having us. So I would like you to, for people like me that do not know what Afro Barimita stand for, can you, in summary, tell our viewers? what Afrometer, uh, Afrobarometer stand for and what have they achieved since the inception of the Afrobarometer. But I'll leave you in the safe hands of Nima Sata, who is, um, of course, a part of the Afrobarometer, and Mr. Uh, Mustafa. Mustafa K. Dabo. They will take you through this segment. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Joy, for the introduction. Um, Afrobarometer is a research network uh, based in Sub-Saharan Africa. Mm. Um, it's operating over 37 countries now in the continent. Um, in the Sub-Saharan Africa, West Africa region, the headquarter is in uh, Ghana, Accra. Uh, it started in 1999 uh, as a public attitude survey uh, in 12 countries. Uh, by now, it's in 37 countries. I mentioned that. Primarily, Afro-Borbito does is assessing public attitude in terms of good governance, economic performance, uh, corruption, and so on and so forth. So essentially, it gives a platform to people, the general public, to have a say in the way they are governed. Um, in the Gambia, this is the first time the survey uh, is done um, because of certain things. Uh, Afrobarometer, for Afrobarometer to operate in any country, uh, there has to be three conditions that must be met. One, there needs to be political freedom. The people must be free to express themselves. Uh, the second thing is there is a need for a recent census data. Uh, in the Gambia, we have the data from Gambia Bureau of Statistics, GBOS. And thirdly, uh, there must be an, uh, a willing partner, sort of a, a, a partner that can work with Afrobarometer. And in the Gambia, we, from the Center for Policy, Research, and Strategic Studies at the University of the Gambia, do uh, work with Afrobarometer along these lines. So that's why in, in, the, in 2018, for the first time, we were able to conduct this um, hugely, you know, successful data uh, pooling in the Gambia, and we have released results now in four key areas. That is, that is results specific to the Gambia: the TRRC, the Truth, Reconciliation, and Reparations Commission, the Constitutional Review Commission, um, the presence of economic and security in the Gambia, mm -hmm. and finally on immigration. So uh, these are the four topics that we uh, would like to share some of the results with. Um, you are our great audience out there. Thank you. Mustafa? Well, I want to, yeah. in here, I want to ask, um, uh, who are the people who took part in the survey? What kind of people you ask? Important. Um, the survey looks at uh, adult Gambians. It's, it's uh, anybody who is 18 and above has equal chance of being interviewed using a random sampling method. But the sample size is 1,200 Gambians across the country. For um, each given topic? For all the topics, 100 questions. 1,200 Gambians. 1,200 Gambians. And that is distributed in terms of um, gender, in terms of, but most importantly, by uh, rural and urban uh, distribution. So this data is based on the findings of data from um, GBOS. Um, so we, Gambia has about 6,000 enumeration areas. That's how Gambia is uh, divided into by populations of about 500 groupings. So there are about 6,000, and so out of the 6,000, we uh, sampled 150 enumeration areas that yielded uh, 1,200 respondents. Uh, ideally, it's 50-50 by men and women, but uh, for some reason we couldn't do that. So we have 49% of these respondents were women and 51% were men. So I think we very quickly go to, yes. uh, just to get our readers to speed up, uh, to catch up with your findings. You said you had four key areas. TRRC, what do people say about it? I will invite my, my colleagues. Yeah. 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 I, I just want to <laughs> emphasize a little bit on methodology, because I think that's very important. Uh, so when you want to convince people about the relevance of your data, people want to know how the research has been done. Because yeah. I saw on social media how people credible. say, yeah, how credible is this thing? Mm -hmm. So Afrobarometer has a standard way of their uh, administering their questionnaires. So mostly all the questions will be the same for Gambia, Ghana, and the rest of the countries where they operate. You, uh, Gambia and other countries have uh, only five questions that are country-based questions, and you can add to the standard questions that have been provided. 
uh, the vice. That is the five issues that peculiar to Gambia. Only. The peculiar to yeah. Gambia only. Uh, so you have a chance to include that. But also, according to their standard, also the sample size is between 120 to 240, I think. The sample size is 1,200. Thousand, so sorry, 1,200 so smaller, to Smaller 2, countries, 2,400 2, for big countries like depending Nigeria. Depending on the population. So Gambia has a very small population. We have a sample of 1,200. And this has been based on uh, the Gibbos sample, as he had highlighted. So you, you, you get 1,200 people to interview? Adults, mm -hmm. yeah, across the country. And you consider the and gender, a rural Gender, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And what did they say about TRRC? Well, the TRRC findings are very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, first and most important thing for Gambians, as far as the TRRC is concerned, mm -hmm. is finding national peace, mm -hmm. healing, forgiveness. You know, These are the most important things for Gambians as far as the TRS is concerned. Let's go to the basic. Did they agree that it should happen? Or it should happen? Trust level. Uh, well, mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's difficult. We didn't ask whether or not they agree oh. that uh, the TRS is what happened. But mm -hmm. what is Gambian's perception about the TRS? So I think that there was a question on yes. how much they trust, trust the TRS. The TRS. Yes. Okay. Okay. Since, uh, since, since there wasn't a the question whether it should happen, exist or not, mm -hmm. So instead of it, people, you ask people whether they trust it, the TRC, mm -hmm. its independence or its... Yeah, so the trust issue, about 46% of Gambians say they trust the CRC. Okay. Mm -hmm. right? Around 29%, 3 in every 10 Gambians say they don't know if they actually trust the TRC, and about 12% say they don't trust the TRC at all. Mm -hmm. So um, then, you know, you look at it. That's good why, news. Why so 46% of the people you ask said they, they trust yes. that they can do a good job. Yes, they trust. Yeah. They trust that the outcome of the TRLC um, process mm -hmm. would, would um, be, be very good for the country. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so but what is interesting actually as far as the TRLC findings are concerned is that about 68% of Gambians say irrespective of the outcomes of the CRC, TRLC, mm -hmm. uh, perpetrators of crime on the mm -hmm. Gambians should be actually uh, brought up to justice mm -hmm. irrespective of the outcome of the, of the yeah, TRLC, of the, which is very, very Interesting. Yeah, I think another interesting finding which will be interesting for the TRRC Commission itself is the number of people who said either themselves or a member of their family were victims of Jambi in one way or the other. That's about 28% of all respondents said either themselves or a member of their family were subjected to uh, some form of human rights abuse under the Jambi regime. So what did that tell you people, the researchers, about the TRRC? Well, two things. Uh, we know for sure that there is need for more work for the TRRC because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, the TRRC is a national process, especially in terms of healing, in terms of trust, in terms of forgiveness. Mm -hmm. So there is need for more work from the level of the TRRC. Uh, we've seen also that the fact that uh, there have been a number of delays in terms of the starting of proceedings and a lot of other issues with the TRRC. That may have led to a level of drop in terms of trust mm -hmm. or the low level of trust. So. As a result of that, there is need for more work from the level of the TRRC. I think there is also a need for more collaboration. We need to engage the people more. Because for people to trust something or to take ownership of it, and in order for the yeah, TRRC to succeed, actually, the Gambian people, beyond 46%, definitely need to trust, trust the TRRC. The, the people, the thing also, people said, some people said, yeah. well, of course, international, international dignitaries who were here at this lodge said, it should not be used to settle political scores. Mm -hmm. Did you come across people concerned that, well, the government of the day perhaps may use this to punish or discredit their opponents? For example, uh, they could say, well, you know, it was Jamme and, and APRC, so if, if Jamme is bad, APRC is bad. So, yeah, I, I think as one of the <coughs> field supervisors during the survey, um, especially in the Fony region, we were former president stronghold is, a lot of them thought that the TRRC is a witch hunt exercise that this government is embarking on to punish um, um, close associates of Jame and Jame himself. And that to them, they don't agree to an extent. And to others too, they will say, I mean, during Jame's time, we had the Al-Ghali Commission, and now we, had, we have the TRRC. So perhaps, who knows, when Barrow goes, there will be another one. So they believe that there is no need to have these commissions, open commissions. 
So there's, from that, you can see there's a lot of need for effort in terms of communication. The TRRC needs to communicate itself with the government people to let them know that this is a different concern when it comes to... Well, they say they are independent. They, they've always insisted they are independent. Yeah. 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 Recently, At what time also did you collect this data? Because that because the TRRC has also started now. I mean, mm -hmm. if you had collected the data perhaps a year ago, things or perceptions of things may, happen, may differ yeah. now. So mm -hmm. the, the data was collected between July, 20 July and August, and August 2018. 2018. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the data is I, very I recent. I period up until now, perceptions may change a little bit mm -hmm. because uh, when we did this survey, it appears that the TRRC have not really done an outreach as such for the majority of the people who say they either don't know about the TRRC, TRRC now or they don't trust okay. it may happen. So does that mean the trust will increase now from 46 to 50? It's a possibility. That's yes, that's, that's a may possibility. Or may, uh, may or may not. Mm -hmm. I think I think it may yeah I think I think it, I mean, it personally it, it will. also there is there is another aspect of the thing that fascin that's quite fascinating I mean when you when I saw the data I saw the aspect of the the soldiers and the air comic and you know a lot of people said that's one topic we are going to do you exhaust the TRS mm -hmm. now because we are going to take them yeah, one after yes. the other. I have something yeah. to say okay. about the, the TRRC. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think you asked the question, what do we learn from this? I think what yeah. we learn from this and what, what, why As we think this may be interesting yeah. for the TRRC commission is where to put their focus on, especially when designing recommendations. Uh, because according to our finding, majority of the people expect the outcome of the TRRC to be more about national healing than it is about reparations, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, so the TRRC now has an opportunity to put their focus more on that. How do we reconcile the nation rather than focusing on how do we give monetary reparations also? But how does that national but healing but also happen at the same time if they are also recommending I prosecutions? Think, I think, I think mm -hmm. we are, yeah, that's a true conflict. Yeah, I think China, China <laughs> yeah. contradictory. Yeah. Reparations so not necessarily, not necessarily contradictory. No, they don't necessarily it's not. contradict. It's, it's just about it's numbers. The number of people who expect national healing is higher than the number of people who expect prosecution. prosecution. And also it turns out that majority of regardless of the TRRC, uh, I'm not sure about the exact numbers, but majority of the people also expect mm -hmm. uh, violators of human rights abuse under Jamme to be tried in courts regardless yes. of the TRRC. Yeah, you know, that's, that's, yes. yes. the, the people, that's why I said there was a specific question whether it should happen or mm -hmm. not. Because people, there are people who believe that mm -hmm. there's no need for it. Obviously. All what you do, people who have been alleged mm -hmm. by witnesses or victims to have don't do bad things to them should be brought to court and evidence be pro, you know be brought against them they prosecute and we move on yeah. mm -hmm. people believe that would be that would that would bring more peace than uh, exposing mr x or for have done you know doing this than this uh. but then that's the other mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you also had a survey mm -hmm. on economic and security um i'm sure you use the same method mm -hmm. and what was the outcome of that well yeah uh, interesting Gambians are split on the presence of economic in the Gambia. Um, up to 50% of Gambians think they should leave now. 50%? 50%. Half actually. of the, half of the, the, the people before you covered. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then 41% of that 50% say strongly believe that they should leave. Mm -hmm. On the other side, up to 46% say they think they should stay. And about 29% uh, strongly feel like they should stay. Mm -hmm. So, so you see, sort of. A uh, split. How? But the details is in, the devil is in the details. Yes, yes. If you go in terms of regions, uh, people from Fony, most people from Fony think they should mm -hmm. leave. Mm -hmm. Yes, which is kind of understandable. Yes, absolutely. In terms mm -hmm. of the demographic, younger people, more younger people feel like economic forces will leave the country. Mm -hmm. So it looks a very, very interesting. You connect that to the other findings we we, we came across okay. as far as the Gambia Armed Forces is concerned, mm -hmm. is that up to sixty something percent think that the Gambia Armed Forces are actually responsible and they're very trusting in terms mm -hmm. of doing their job in securing mm -hmm. the Gambia's national integrity or territorial integrity. Mm -hmm. However, 37% of Gambians feel like they don't have the required resources mm -hmm. to do their job. So they sort of the need for sort of mm -hmm. the, uh, you know, the government or security <laughs> sector reform program to focus also in terms of equipping mm -hmm. the uh, forces in terms of doing their job. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I mean, um, Let's, yeah, the economic. I mean, you said, so according to your survey, the largest percentage of people, yeah. you question said, they must go, or they will have to go. Eventually, they want them to go. Yes. Mm -hmm. Good. And others said, um, they think the government national armed forces can do, can do the overall security work. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Did you come across concerns like, uh, all right, people who are concerned that what will happen if they leave? Because apparently, uh, 
the context of economic is that they come in to fill a vacuum mm -hmm. that is to protect the new government, mm -hmm. the president, and the, and the country mm -hmm. at a time when trust was zero in terms of the armed forces because uh, the, then the president of the republic had refused to rescind power and they were believed that majority of the members of the armed forces are actually buying into that idea. They, they didn't at the time have the, prof the instincts to, be, to remain professional mm -hmm. and that is by uh, remaining, I mean confining their duties to protect the integrity of the country, sovereign integrity of the people and forget about the politics. Did you say majority? Well at the time that was the belief. Mm -hmm. All right, now the new army, the army and you know, the new commandment are telling, trying to tell us that they want an army that will accept mm -hmm. that their duties are subject to civilian control and that there is no time now for coup d'etats or, mm -hmm. or, or mutinies, etc. are all over now. Now, at this stage, did you come across with people who are concerned that we have not reached that state of reforms? Mm -hmm. where we can say if economic leaves mm -hmm. we wouldn't have trouble with people people who, who are not willing to align themselves to this new With order that yeah. was the concern of many people. yes i think as you said gambians are split mm -hmm. on on that aspect whether the sub-regional forces should remain in the country for so long as the security of the country is consolidated mm -hmm. or they should leave and then to some they shouldn't leave because the army was really not, the army has not been innocent, mm -hmm. especially during Jamie's time. They've been, I mean, one of the um, um, perpetrators, elect perpetrators, I would say, of heinous human rights abuses and crimes. So therefore, they believe that the army um, may not be able to do that job. So we need the economic. And again, the fear, fear of mutiny, mm -hmm. that if economic leaves now, the army could be capable of doing anything. So, so therefore, there is I a find it very tricky. Uh, I yes, find some, 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 some Those people, are the yes. people who do not necessarily trust uh, mm -hmm. in the army. The because army, we have a yes. number of, we have a, a, a higher percentage of people who trust the national army. army but well. there are a few people who do not. Mm -hmm. So the people who do not trust the army, this is their perception, that sure. they have been strongly uh, aligned with the Jame regime and we don't trust them enough at this point to allow them to take over the security of our country. Well, you don't also so the, the, think... The people, now listen, there is no question of their capacity or capability to take care of our defense. Sure. The only problem is whether we could trust that they will be really loyal to the government of the day. That was the problem. The question was about their capability. No, what and, capability? And their trust, the trust the, the in their, trust in their job in terms of yeah, protecting and their the access to resources. A lot of people believe they can do that. Yeah. Yes. They and are capable of And majority said to they are professional. But, but all, let's look yeah, at also let's so look I at think also that just before you come yeah. in, I think it's what we see in this data is that there's a shift from concern mm -hmm. uh, from external security to internal security. Mm -hmm. um, yes. From the same results, we see up to 40% of Gambians, four in every 10 Gambians, say that they've had something stolen from their houses in the past one year. General security. Mm -hmm. General security, mm -hmm. internal security. Mm -hmm. Or that they fear walking around in their neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and these are issues that really concern internal security more mm -hmm. than it's concerned mm -hmm. uh, territorial integrity. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. I think so you talk, talk about immigration, or you still have yeah, so No, uh, yeah, so be, because if you look at, I, I still have economic and the soldiers. Yeah, yeah. If you look at the, 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 the support level of the army mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as at the time, because we are relating the lack of trust in the army to Jambe, mm -hmm. to their mm -hmm. support of Jambe. And if you look at the support of Jambe itself, mm -hmm. as at the time he lost the election, mm -hmm. it was almost half of the quota population. Mm -hmm. sure. It's, uh, you understand? I mean, so you are now talking about the trust of the army, mm -hmm. almost little more than that. Mm -hmm. So that probably, in my opinion, probably tells, and I don't know if you agree, mm -hmm. that they've kept the support that they enjoy as at that time mm -hmm. and win much more after Jambe left. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to a large extent I'll agree with that. But also it, it oh. speaks to the fact that generally the army is 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 is, is being very personal. Um, it's only on the Jambe that we saw in terms of you know every now and then issues coming out, mm -hmm. attempt coup attempt coup attempts and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And sort of the you know, politicization of the army. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But minus that, and look at also in terms of uh, the reform agenda that has been pursued in the mm -hmm. security sector uh, mm -hmm. program uh, by the mm -hmm. new administration. So you can think of it as a sort of, you can interpret it in different ways. 
for one possible interpretation is that you can say maybe this reform agenda is sort of taking base. Yeah, so to the extent that Gambians have now seen that the army is professionalized mm -hmm. and that you know, all they need now is a little bit of support in terms of resources to be there where they now, should be as mm -hmm. an army. Now, it, it, based on the findings of the report, and if you are looking at the economic, um, of course, there is a transition going on and yes, then the okay. economic will eventually exit. Mm -hmm. So, but if you were to to interpret this data to Mr. Baji, the National Security Advisor, as mm -hmm. to the basis of what he should do mm -hmm. uh, based on these findings. What would that be? Like, what does the Army read like now to, to get hold of the thing? I mean, you talked about resources, uh, but are there other concerns that you've seen in the survey that, that Gambians mm -hmm. need the Army to have? In order? Uh, if I am going mm -hmm. to comment on that, I think it's important also where uh, to do a closer analysis on where the resistance <coughs> is coming from, the lack of trust, where it's coming from. Demba mm -hmm. mentioned that in the, the Western region generally, especially in the Fonyi areas, mm -hmm. uh, there is more trust in the army than there is in the economic. Mm -hmm. So I think, for example, the first point mm -hmm. of uh, scrutiny would be what, what, what really is happening besides the Jame effect, what is happening within this region that makes uh, economic less favorable to the army. Right. Uh, I mean, I don't know if this is the right place to point certain things out, but uh, through a different research other than this, we found out that uh, there are so many underlying issues between the economic and the, the phony people in terms of uh, uh, the, the things concerning their animals, things concerning their, the economic uh, people's relationship with uh, the uh, locals there, their women, and so on and so forth. But also there is the customer's effect also. Uh, where majority of those who are perceived to be part of the economic are all mm -hmm. Senegalese people, and there is the uh, deep perception from the Fonyi region especially that Fonyi can be used as a launching point for the Senegalese to attack mm -hmm. customers from there. So all of these are issues that need to be considered. Right, it's, it's, it's very likely that this might be an influencing force to the mm -hmm. responses that we Yeah, have. I think, and importantly, to the timber business, yeah. I mean, the timber... I mean, as a business, is one mm. of the most lucrative yeah. um, sources of earning income in that part of the country yeah. than any other thing. Mm. So to them, the economic forces are there to infringe. Um, um, um. Well, well, I think we want so, to so then again, you know, there yeah. was an inc recent incident um, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, took place between, well, now we know to be mm -hmm. Senegalese soldiers who are here mm -hmm. on a different arrangement. They are not mm -hmm. economic, so to speak, mm -hmm. um, who are involved with timber, timber, timber mm -hmm. transport drivers mm -hmm. or something like that. And, that is, and then the economy was keen to mm -hmm. point out that that is not their Monday. people. Yeah. Um, it was Senegalese soldiers who are here on a different arrangement. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you find out that um, I think we, have, we still have problems, mm -hmm. you know, that people politicize security matters still now. It depends on so much. Who you talk to depends on how what that person's political view is. Uh, I agree with you 100 on that. I think that is, that's, yeah. that's, that's quite yeah. uh, something that we yeah. what I might might even affect this so way. Yeah. Because people people will think, okay. In my view, yeah. security is shouldn't be politicized. True. Mm -hmm. It's very important. I have no problem with anybody uh, with with any assumption that this Gambian National Army, of course, that's not not now. They are well capable of taking the country's securities. Mm -hmm. The only problem is mm -hmm. where their political affiliations lie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If we can get them all to think and act professionally, professionally that the army has no business in politics. Mm -hmm. Jambe is Jambe. If it is gone, he goes with his good things or bad things. Baro mm -hmm. will go tomorrow. Mm -hmm. We will still be soldiers. Mm -hmm. Nobody should lose your job because the government has changed. Or nobody should lose your promotion because the government has changed. Mm -hmm. That shouldn't be. If we all get, get that, mm -hmm into our ways and crap, then perhaps you know the army would be an army mm -hmm. that would serve any government that come here mm -hmm. and then go i think this is the problem yeah. um, rather than whether they are capable of okay. they, they, everybody know they are capable of connection but whether they are they can be trusted they are ready at this point yes mm -hmm. yeah I, and i think for us uh, those because of obviously we, we had research. we had cases of meeting mm -hmm. we had, there's an ongoing um court matter mm -hmm. just talking about things that i thought have already gone like People attempting to overturn the government. I said, what? Mm -hmm. Did you say what is happening? Mm -hmm. I thought that those, those issues are there. Mm -hmm. So you still there. As long as those issues are here, then there are people will be divided as to what do we do. Nobody wants foreign troops in their soil. Guinea-Bissau have foreign troops in their soil for how long now? 
they couldn't get them away because they, even they themselves have resigned to the fact that if these people leave, mm -hmm. there will be, be chaos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we it as It heightens a sense of insecurity. Yes. Yeah. I think perhaps we should work on uh, and get to trust each other more, you know, by being professional in whatever we do, so that we continue to live in peace without anybody watching over us. Yeah. Sure. And I think that's one of the essence of these findings, so, yeah. for the government to listen to what the people yes. have to say in yes. regards to the manners in which they should be managed, or their affairs should be managed. Yeah. So if we have majority of the citizenry saying that they trust or they have trust in the army and that the government yes. should or whoever is in charge should be able to mobilize resources exactly. to equip the, um, the army or sister security forces to protect the citizenry, I think um, the government... We have a long way. You also have immigration, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. We have yes. It. Immigration, what are you looking the for? The CRC. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk immigration. CRC will talk. <laughs> okay. so immigration, what are you looking for immigration? We're looking at the perception of Gambians in terms of the, the level of um, the pathway and the, you know, Irregular. the messes and so on. So, Interestingly, over 80% of them I think that the uh, uh, pathway of migration has reduced drastically. Mm -hmm. However, up to I think 40% if I'm not missing the figures, think that the, the uh, problem of rural urban migration has actually increased. Mm -hmm. you know? And so, um, and, and I, I try to make this comparison as well, that when you look at the you know, migration patterns and you look at the you know, concern for internal security in terms of you know, personal security, uh, you see sort of, a, sort of a connection there. Up to 40% of Gambians or something has been picked out of their houses. Um, you know, so the increase in terms of urbanizations, you know, mm -hmm. congestions and so on. So you can therefore see the, the reality in, in terms of the data that we bring out. That there's increase in terms of congestion in traffic. If you go downtown, in you see that lot happening. Mm -hmm. You see that uh, at least report of reports of crime increasingly uh, on the media and so on and so on. So these are issues that connect to. Uh, everyday life that we as Gambians uh, see. Mm -hmm. The other reason I uh, think that we saw in terms of migration is that uh, up to 40% of Gambians actually say they migrate because they want to find jobs. Yes, and, and that is really concerning, considering also in terms of uh, unemployment rate in the Gambia. Mm -hmm. uh, other sources of migration, for other economic reasons, economic hardship, for instance, about 38%, mm -hmm. um, and, and so on and so forth. So these are very, very um, interesting. Uh, uh, so, in other words, you. You, you focus on why people move from Kian, for example, to come to Combo, yes. mm -hmm. rather than why are Guineans and Malians are coming to the Gambia? Oh, so uh, Gambians actually think that movement within ECOWAS is difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. So we looked at that in terms of what is the Gambian perception in terms of moving About within... About 63% yes. respond that in the, in the community. Which is true. I yeah. experience yeah. moving ECOWAS to be very, very true. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And so... Um, if you look at that, well, it, it doesn't say much about others coming into the Gambia, mm -hmm. but it says a lot about Gambia moving out. And mm -hmm. so, interestingly, if you if you look, connect that to the ta in terms of preference mm -hmm. for destination, most Gambians, you can guess that, actually prefer to move to Europe. Mm -hmm. And then North America and other countries before, you know, about 1% only, or less than 1% say they rather move to another African country. Mm -hmm. And on, on, the, on the reverse of the coin, mm -hmm. most African countries want to come here in, in drops, like Guineans, Sierra Leoneans and Nigerians come here mm -hmm. in, in peaks, like that, that, that Gambians to those countries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. So what do you learn from that? What do you learn from that? Um, I think... You want to yes, what are coming here? Yeah. So, uh, two things. There is need for um, the responsible stakeholders here sort of focus on issues such as employment opportunities. Because that's one of the reasons why people want to work. They want mm -hmm. to find work. Mm -hmm. yes, that, mm -hmm. that's one. The second thing is they need also to focus on you know, bettering the economic conditions of Gambia. Mm -hmm. you know, service delivery, for instance, is fundamentally important. Mm -hmm. uh, we have some data that relates to service delivery later on that we release. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, when people don't feel economically included, when they don't seem to have a lot of trust in the economic system mm -hmm. of the country in terms of the prospects for their growth and development, then there's that sort of push factor for them to move around. So, and there's a lot of uh, focus by the Euro administration in terms of keeping Gambia or even bringing Gambia back from, you know, other countries around the world. And so there's really need for government to focus on, you know, building the necessary uh, economic uh, conditions for Gambia to stay in Gambia. The, there are, is there, I mean, you've talked about the rural urban migration. I mean, you know, Gambia is one of the highest in, the, yeah. the, in, mm -hmm. the, in Africa. But if you look at it, where, where was there any coloration between 
people's movement from rural to urban area and the slump in agricultural activity. I mean, they're talking about job. Yeah. But mm -hmm. Is there any correlation? Because we've seen <laughs> in the past mm -hmm. decade, we've seen agriculture slump from employing for 70 people percent of the population to only 31 percent of the population. Yeah. That's, that's, that's interesting. I mean, there could be four that we study there, to be honest. But, yeah. um, you know, it, 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 that's the good thing about this kind of baseline research studies. Uh, they could be sort of the beginning of further studies. Mm -hmm. So there would be an interesting thing to say why, for instance, increase in rural urban migration. Mm -hmm. And definitely agriculture would be one of the key areas to look at. Did they actually in say that it's in search of job in the rural area? I mean, yeah, the first two things, the first, uh, the two things that came t on top is poverty and o economic opportunities, both for the rural urban migration and also the, the from Gambia to outside migration. So you, for majority of the people, it, uh, it's a matter of preference where to go, either to move from the rural area to the urban area, and also, uh, I don't know, affordability. Is it affordable to move to Europe? Uh, as opposed to moving from Kiang to Birkama, for example. I think so it may also have to do yeah. with uh, like living conditions and economic, uh, uh, well, let's say, facilities. In terms mm -hmm. of, okay, yeah. the government policy in the past, mm -hmm. uh, in, for example, as an example, just immediately after independence, mm -hmm. regional capitals like Georgetown, Mansakongo, mm -hmm. where beehives of activity. Soma. Mm -hmm. When I was, yeah. Mansakongo, when I was young, yeah. Mansakongo had. Masako was almost as busy, more busy than Banjul is right now. Mm -hmm. Only that we don't have a port. But if you do, there are public works is there, Ministry of Health, there. every department is there. I think, I think the issue here is a failure so of no, that's not decentralization. Happen. That's not happening anymore. You go yeah. to Sapo, in the, the CRR at the time, mm -hmm. when we were young, beehive of activities. Yeah. People get here, who are posted there, they stay there for 30 years, they don't want to come here. Yeah. And uh, you go to... Uh, even uh, even in the phone, in Sibar and, and other places, Bintang, they have, they have trading trade posts. Everything was moving there. But now, all those things are now Yeah, it's important you mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. And those people must look for livelihood. That's why they come here. You had your small uh, petty bourgeoisies exactly. in all of those uh, in places. Those, those now, areas, now it's, yes. it seems like every economic activities happen around, around the, the, the coast. Yeah, so again, not, yeah. I, I, you can, you can, you can. Yeah, I think it's, it's to an extent it's a failure of decentralization yes, where yes. services and other um, resources should be available yes. at yes. regional or local um, um, local areas. Well, that's not happening, it's and that's why we have. We've so all the opportunities are here within this area, yeah. so and everybody comes here. To and if you look at if you look at recent data, you realize that um, agriculture is no more the the major contributor to our GDP. Mm -hmm. It's now services service and service sector, service sector and, and the industrial sector. And that's where most Gambians want to work yeah, now. Yeah, mm -hmm. And that's why that it's vacuum right. in the agricultural sector mm -hmm. is, is, is currently. Yes, yes, yes. uh, that, that shift in the economy, I mean, was there any attempt to, to look at why Gambians are, are shifting from one key activity like agriculture to service sector from there to the industry? Because there was this multidimensional and inclusive growth report that actually seeks to explain why Gambians are leaving from, you know, the the agriculture sector going to the service sector because they claim they said the agriculture sector doesn't pay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that's one so, aspect. Of it. Yeah, that's one aspect. And then um, of course there are there are no farmers. I mean, the, the thing is, the, the same people who were farming when I was young are the same people who are farming. Still farming. When I am taught in a classroom agricultural science, mm -hmm. I don't go to be a farmer. I come to either come to be another teacher of agricultural well, science. Or oh, I am a journalist. <laughs> now, who are going to be the farmers? Our, our grandfathers are still the farmers. So they, they get old and die, and then there's nobody to replace them. I think, yeah. I think well, unfortunately, <laughs> there's no farmer in Kia. Uh, there's still, uh, still, there's still no, farmers. No, there's still yeah. Yeah. Even Jamba yeah. said. The issue of all those things, too. Yes, for example, the rice fields. In the, in the, in, along the river Gambia, which used to be very, very fertile. Mm -hmm. I mean, we go there, you get, you, you go there, you get rice that you will uh, feed on until the next the other new season comes. That's no more salt and other intrusions have spoiled all those things. Sure. So I mean, it's it's, it's whole sort of. Yeah. Um, so I did on yeah. climate change also speak to some of these. Ah, okay. Sure. So, okay. You so who do you sure. do you go to government officials with these findings, or you just publish them for them to consume it like everyone else? Well, no, no, so two things. We publish them, mm. also we share them with government officials and all the important mm -hmm. stakeholders. The media, for instance, yes, yes. Uh, donor community and investors were interested in issues, uh, in the various issues that they're interested in. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's available on the Afrobarometer website, 
for Barometer.org. Mm -hmm. um, you can access all of this. And that will can do a cross tap of these tools mm -hmm. in Gambia compared to other countries such as Senegal, Ghana, and other countries in South Africa. Thank yeah, so that's uh, uh, just very for, quickly. The, for the final yeah. point where, where, where we have really time. Yeah, yeah we don't have time. I just, I just want to say so, quickly, there, okay. are there are various levels to the uh, data dissemination process. The mm -hmm. first process was to have a, what we call a confidential briefing with the, the government officials. So we invited people from the office of the president, the ministries, and the various you departments. You should have audience with the president. We, we, yeah. Yeah. I think. Uh, diplomats were yeah, to be no, no, part no, no, of what we call donor briefing, which yeah. is here to happen. And then there is the public release that had happened. This audience ago. with the president. Thank certainly. you very much. Okay. Um, it was quite insightful to know what the Afrobarometer stood for or is standing for. And um, it's good that we are able to learn what people think, people's perception and perspective on um, some of the major institutions that um, are now in place. For instance, TRC, TRRC, Economic Immigration, just to mention a few. And we hope that subsequently that your research will, and your recommendation um, would be considered by the government, not just the government, and every other responsible Gambian that would like to know what the Afrobarometer findings have been, especially students as well. So we want to thank you very much, Mr. Um, Demba and Mr. Kujavi as well for being on the brunch. I know for Mr. Kujavi, it's your first time here, so you're highly welcome to the brunch. Thank you. So quickly, what will be your final words? Okay. All right, uh, my last word would be that... Um, I hope this, this is not your last word. Maybe you can tell us, you can use the last word to tell us what other topics are coming. Well, we, this will continue, hopefully. Okay. Uh, this uh, situation persists, the condition for the survey continues yeah. to exist, then we'll continue for sure. Uh, but we also have a lot more data that we have not shared with the public. Oh, the big one is will. to come. Yeah, ah, we'll the big one is there. Yeah. Yeah. So the so popularity uh, is not coming. Ah, yeah. <laughs> that's also there. Yeah. It's yeah. there. Yeah. Why do you it's keep the bombshells coming. behind? <laughs> <laughs> they did that. It's it's coming coming out, uh, trick, uh, on the 23rd of November. Ah. So Do you fear getting yourself unpopular with uh, its oh, no. <laughs> Hopefully not. Could you have uh, ah, Hopefully. Yeah, I think that was a great moment being here and then um, the government ought to learn and then make sure that they listen to what the people have to say. And importantly, Mo Ibrahim Foundation, um, um, how to call it? Uh, draws um, its governance index from the ah, Afrobarometer data to award presidents for being uh, more democratic or governance oriented. So I think it's a very good Thank you very much, our special guest. And quickly we'll be um, taking you through um, a special restaurant that we visited at Kololi called Cafe Denmark. Let's take you through what we had there. <laughs> Thursday, 
every Thursday, they am live band. Yeah, talk of the town band. Yeah, every Friday, just one of the daily one. Everything from chicken to pizza to steak, ladyfish, barracuda, many things. I'm doing Wi-Fi, you know, so you're not customized as you're doing what we do regular guy they will use. But they own on the use Wi-Fi. Of course, I'm doing some TV for daily match, match, match them. They play daily football all the time. Wow. Cafe del Maglia is one of the hottest spots in town. Yeah, because we operate for 16 years now. And definitely uh, our food is number one. Yeah, because uh, the place is clean from outside to inside. Yes, Cafe Denmark is the hottest place in town. Welcome back and quickly we'll be um, taking our final words from our panelists. What do you have to say, Mr. Lamin? Yeah, well, we're looking forward to another exciting week of mm. uh, news coverage, either here on Skerpatu or on, in the newspaper. So we, when we come back here Saturday, <coughs> we'll be even richer with materials. Hopefully, yeah, yeah, I don't have much to say other than what Lamin has said. Uh, thank you for hosting the Afro Baro Media and Surf Pros for today. Thank you. I hope I will break a story that will influence the next brunch. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. So we want to thank all of your viewers for always sticking to your Facebook and watching nothing more than Kerfatu shows and the brunch. We wish you and you know the most exciting weekend ahead. Do have a great day.